Ladies and gentlemen, today we are talking about section 11.5, areas of circles and sectors, which is very similar to the last lesson, which was on circumference and arc length. So let's start with a couple of review problems, just finding the basic area and using the basic area formula of a circle. So for A, we're looking at this. It's, uh, I'm not quite sure what this circle is because it's so blurry. It's obviously not a watch. It could be something like a barometer measuring atmospheric pressure, uh, not a thermometer, so I'm not quite sure what that is. But uh, the area of this circle, the area formula is given by pi times the radius squared. So we don't know the area. We do know the radius, however, and that's 2.5. So we can simply multiply uh, 2.5 squared times our 3.14 for pi. So the area is approximately 19.625 or 0.63 when I round to the nearest hundredth, and that's square centimeters. We use the same formula since we know the area in this one. On the right, part B, we know the area is 113.1. Uh, that's centimeters squared, and we want to find the diameter. Well, we can find the radius using this guy, and then use the radius to find the diameter. So we'll divide by pi on both sides to get r squared by itself. So if we do 113.1 divided by 3.14, it's going to be about 36.0191. I'm using four decimal places because I don't like to round too much until the end of a problem. And then once I take the square root, uh, if I round to the nearest hundredth, it's actually going to be 6. That's centimeters. So if my radius is 6 centimeters times 2, my diameter is 12 centimeters. So very basic. We're going to move on from the area of circles and look at some sectors. So a sector is um, kind of like this portion of the circle that's cut out. It's like a slice of it. Uh, and if you were to think of arc length maybe as the crust of the pizza, and this is kind of like the area of the slice of the pizza. So um, because I like to use food analogies apparently, because maybe because I'm hungry today and it's 11 something and I'm about to eat lunch. So uh, to find the area of this sector, it's very similar to yesterday. You can first of all look at it as a proportion with the area of your sector, the part, over the area of the circle, the whole. And that should equal the arc measure, the part, over the uh, degree measure of the whole, 360. Virtually identical to yesterday, this half is the same. The difference over here is that instead of air, uh, circumference, we're using area. Instead of arc length, we're using area of the sector. Secondly, you can also say the area of the sector is going to equal the fraction, which is the angle portion, times the area. So this fraction of the area equals the area of the sector. So virtually identical to what we covered yesterday. Um, let's go ahead and do a couple of examples here. Uh, for this one, we're looking to find the areas of both of these sectors. So let's start with the small one, the one that's in red. So we'll say uh, the area of the small sector will equal our fraction, which is 70 over 360, and that's times the area, pi times the radius squared, where our radius is 8. So the area of the small sector, once we multiply this out, give me one moment, again using 3.14 for pi, be about 39.08 when you round to the nearest hundred. And that's, in this case, just square units because we're not given anything about the units. Uh, there are a couple ways to find the second sector. Uh, I'll show you a similar way to what we just did. So for the area of the large sector, Well, our fraction, we don't know this large angle here, but since the whole thing is 360 and this is 70, if we subtract 360 from 70, the remaining portion is 290. So that's 290 uh, over 360, and again times pi times the radius, which is 8 squared. So the only thing that has changed is our arc measure. Everything else has remained the same. So we do uh, pi times the radius squared, and then times that 290 over 360, we end up with the area of the large sector, which is about 161 point, looks like 88 when you round it, and then again, that's just units squared. 
you will get something different if you use the pi button instead of 3.14 for pi. Now, instead of doing this, uh, what we also could have done is just found the area of the whole circle and subtracted the area of the small sector, and then that would equal the remaining portion, the area of the large sector. So if we do uh, pi times 8 squared, or 64 times 3.14, and then subtracted this guy, the 39, 0 0.08, we should get about what this guy is, and we do, 61.88 exactly. So this would be kind of a nice shortcut if you're asked to find both sector areas. Just a thought if you'd like to employ that method. Uh, let's move on to another type of example here. Um, we're going to use the diagram to find these three different indicated measures. The first thing we're going to find is the area of this uh, entire circle, circle D. So well, we know that uh, 14 is the radius, so we can just, for part one, say uh, the area is pi times the radius, which is 14, squared. And we'll round to the nearest hundredth, so 3.14 times 14 to the second power. I don't need that there. So the area is 615.44, and that's in square feet. Part two, we want the area of the red sector. So let me see. Probably make more sense if I did that in red instead. So the area of the red sector. Well, to find the area of the red sector, which I'll say is the small sector in this case, it's going to equal the fraction, which in this case is 120 over 360 of the entire area, which we could go in and say pi times 14 squared, but we already know the area anyway, 615.44, so let's just use that. And then we'll multiply that times 120 over 360, which is actually one-third, so we could actually just multiply it times uh, one-third, or you could divide by three, whatever way you like to look at it. So the area of the small sector is going to equal 205 about 0.15, and that's in square feet. And thirdly, we can also do this for the blue sector. Instead of 120, this would be 240, once we subtract 120 from 360. So you can say that the area of the large sector will equal the fraction, which is 240 over 360, which reduces to 2 thirds, then times your area, which is 615.44. Or you could just subtract this guy from 615.44. Either way you do it will give you the correct answer. So the area of the large sector ends up equaling, let me do this really quickly here, so 2 thirds, whoops, times 615.44. It's about 410.29 square feet. Uh, let's do one or two more uh, different cases. So let's look at this one. We're going to use the diagram to find the area of that circle, V. Uh, we don't know the radius, but we do know an arc measure, and we do know the area of this sector right here is 35 square meters. So let's use our proportion, the area of the sector over the entire area. We can just call it A, since we're just looking for the area, not for the radius. No need to put the formula here. That equals 40 over 360. And you can simplify this to 1 over 9, and that would be fine. But for the sake of uh, cross-multiplying, we don't really have to. We could just do 360 times 35, and then divide by 40. And we end up with the area equaling 315, and that's in square meters. And I think we'll stop the video there. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, send me an email or see me before or after school. Hopefully this video is slightly helpful.